has sex with women. And that's why there's no such thing as a female angel. So the angels saw that women were beautiful, you know, and came down separate. And that's when we begin to get eight feet, nine feet, six feet basketball players. <laughs> you know? So that's how giants came in the earth, okay? Yeah. So we all think that Noah, Noah's day was because of that, but God was really pissed off that these angels, who immediately were sent to hell, you get Peter. I think it's first Peter. They are already in hell. So the angels with Satan uh, are still reigning in the earth, okay? But those angels, that means it was two falls. Huh? Those angels came down, had sex with men, had these babies, and God sent them straight. So they are in hell. Amen? Now, later the descendants of the Nephilim were called the sons of Anak in Numbers 13.33. Or Achanim in Deuteronomy 2.11 and chapter 9, verse 2. They inhabited the land of Canaan prior to Israel's conquest. <coughs> Similar races of giants had also inhabited Moab in Deuteronomy 2, verses 9 to 10, and Ammon in Deuteronomy 2, verses 19 to 20. A second class of giants who inhabited pre-Israelite Palestine was the Riphium. So you have two types of giants, Nephilims and Riphiums. Amen? Amen. There were, their last survivor was a dude named Og, king of Bashan, Deuteronomy 3, verse 11 and 13. The Old Testament also records cases of individual giants. The well-known Goliath, what we just read in 1 Samuel 17, was a Palestine champion. A family of giants from Gath, now that's very important, I don't want to get too heavy on that because Gath is also Galgotha, and you know who got crucified on where? Galgotha, okay. So a family of giants from Gath were among the Philistine enemies slain by David and his followers in 2 Samuel 21, verse 16 to 22, and 1 Chronicles 20, verse 4 through 8. Now ain't that amazing, David killed the giant, and this, he taught others how to kill giants. So if you kill a giant, you can teach somebody else how to kill a giant. I killed some giants in my life. That's Amen. why I'm standing here trying to show you how to kill a giant. Amen. Amen. But here's the real deal here. Giants are tough. They sure are. It's easy to talk about how you handle them as long as they are not yours. Amen. 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 Oh, so I can talk about killing Amen. one all day long. Yeah. No, it ain't mine. composure 
center of this chaos. Everything else is going on crazy around him. But he was cool. Oh man, I got him. Take him out. You know, because I think the way I look at it, I think he must have thought to himself, if I die, I'm gonna be with the Lord. Amen. But if God be for me, who can be against me? Oh y'all got it. Come on now. And watch this. It gave him clear vision. Ain't no way in the world you can run with a sling, a stone, and hit somebody dead center and square the forehead. That's because you let chaos go away. You let all that crap, that talking threat to you, because you focus on what you want to do. Yeah. Amen. 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 Now, this is how you can conquer these giants by the word of God. Are you ready? Amen. Now, I got a lot of scripture here, and I know I ain't going to have enough time to get it all in. So I hope you want to write down some of them. We try to cover as much of them as we possibly can. But this is how you conquer the giants by the word of God. And there are 11 types of giants that I wrote down. Ready? Fear is a giant. <coughs> Number two, bitterness is a giant. Because all these things cause you to go act out. You bitter, unforgiving. You know, you don't want the pain, you want to go somewhere and numb it. So it can't be the drug and alcohol. You know, it can't be the sex. Because as soon as you finish with all that, that stuff is still standing there. Yeah. You're still bitter, you're still fearful. Mm. Amen. Amen. Number three, jealousy is a giant. Here's the big one. You ready? Lust is a giant. Amen. Amen. Lust is a giant. Depression is a giant. People depressed we got to pop pills all day long to get out of depression. I need one to go to sleep and I need one to wake up. It's a giant. Loneliness is a giant. Now watch this. Resentment. What I could have been. Resenting others for achieving what you did is a giant, and it all hinders you. Amen? Amen. Grief is a giant. Oh no! You don't want no grief. Oh no! <laughs> oh, no. I have Why is the pain is a giant? Why is pain a giant? Our country right now is so drug infested, it's amazing. And not with illegal drugs, with prescription drugs. Amen. Now, I mean, it's amazing how many people are taking drugs for pain that are now hooked. And they don't even know how to get them off of it now. They're using methadone to get people off of painkillers. It don't make no sense. You remember the crack babies? Yeah. Now we got drug prescriptive babies. It's such an epidemic that they don't know what to do. Amen. Amen. Crack babies is nothing compared to prescriptionally drug babies now. Hmm. That was just a prelude to where we are. It's amazing. And they're shooting up the mothers with methadone because they so, and the babies are coming out shaking worse than crack. Yeah, but they talked about crack, right? <laughs> now look at it. It's the same thing they sold our communities. It didn't matter what community you're in, because all prescription drugs are legal in every community. Amen. 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 Here's the other thing, procrastination. You know what that means? Amen. Amen. I guess I ain't got to tell you. You know what that means. And finally, rumors. Now, let's look at fear again. Let's just go to, I'm just, uh, I got right now Psalms 27, 1 through 3, but we're going to cover that later. I got that for fear. Luke 12, uh, Luke 12, 4 through 5. But let's go to 2 Timothy 1, 7. 2 Timothy 1 7. Psalms 27. We're going to hit Psalms 27 in this entirety. Okay? But I want to just, uh, these are just some of the scriptures I wrote down that match up with each one of these giants. So go to 2 Timothy, because for time's sake, I can't cover every one of them. We're on Sunday morning Bible study, and you know, <coughs> pastor said an hour, and it's going to be an hour. Huh? 2 Timothy 1 7. 1 7. Famous scripture, most folk know it by heart. It says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a what? Sound mind. Amen. So God ain't giving you. Paul, when that thing come up, you get to speak it. Tell it, giant. God ain't giving me no spirit of fear. Amen. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 12.1. 
12, 13. Ecclesiastes, right after Proverbs. Ecclesiastes 12, 13 says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. But this is the whole duty of man. Now, that's a healthy thing. So you let that person, I'm going to fear God and keep his commandments. But well, that's my duty. But I ain't fearing you, Johnny. I got no fear of you, Johnny. I fear the Most High God. Who are you compared to the Most High God? Amen. Amen. All right, let's cover bitterness. Matter of fact, I want to go to Proverbs 14. Since we're down that way, Proverbs 14. This is bitterness. Because bitterness, man, it, it just hinders you. You know? Uh, you know, and I, and I hate to say it, there's a lot of bitter women today because of what some other man did to you. Amen. So the guy who comes along who's good, hey, say so, bro. You, I got to say it, because yeah. I'm experienced. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, then, and you know, I hate to say it, we see a lot of mixed races in America, because I'm not prejudiced at all, but if you talk to a lot of brothers and the reason why they're going to Caucasian and, or an Asian is because they say, I don't ever want another bitter black woman in my life. <laughs> then you got a black woman who said, I don't want that any man. It's nothing but the money. I'm just going to use him. That's such a stupid attitude. Amen. Amen. And it defeats each other. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Amen. So we don't want you because you're bitter and you don't want us because you think we're a bunch of dogs. But all men ain't dogs. Amen. 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 And all women ain't better. Amen. 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 I like to tell people this. Men, all men say the same thing, ladies. It's up for you to find a sincerity in the word spoken. Amen. And how do you do that? You put in the work. You make him prove it. The scripture says, a man who finds a good, a man who finds a wife finds a good thing. Proverbs 18, 22. And ladies, if you're trying to find him, you've already lost. Right. But that ain't your job. You took the hunt from him. Come on, bro. Come the on scripture in. says, and I think it's Psalm 65 and 4, I think it is, he who is chosen. So that tells me men find, women choose. Amen. 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 But if you're fine, you no know, wonder he's still hunting. Come on now. Come on. Because if you found him and gave it up too quick, you can sit on the couch. Amen. Well, he ain't got the work. Because you found him. I ain't got to do nothing but make you go, ooh. <laughs> That's it. But if you tell my aunt, you ain't sitting here. Come on. My aunt make you about it. My wife made me work for a whole year. My aunt, you ain't coming here. You ain't living here. My it ain't going to happen. Oh, I love it. And I like it. And boy, I like to get with you. But until you do this, it ain't happening. By the character he displays to you. Amen. Fourteen ten says, "What the heart knoweth his own bitterness, and the stranger doeth not intermeddle with his joy." But the heart knoweth his own bitterness. See, it's a heart thing. It's a heart thing. Now, which one? Also, write down Ephesians four, verse thirty-one and thirty-two. And let's go to Hebrews 12, 14 and 15. I'm only choosing these scriptures by the way. Amen. Hebrews 12. That's what I'm going to read. My Lord, my Lord. Hebrews 12, verses 14 and 15. And it says, Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Look diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness, lest any root of bitterness spring up, trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Amen. 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 Don't get anything out of what I'm saying? Amen. 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 You see these giants? Yes. You get rid of the giant, I guarantee you won't have to numb nothing. Amen. Amen. You won't need that man who has to comfort you. You'll find out Jesus will comfort you. Amen. You won't need that woman who has to comfort you. You'll find out Jesus will comfort you. And then he'll guide you to the right man or woman by what's coming out of your mouth. Amen. 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 
Because a man is supposed to provide physically, spiritually, yeah. financially, Amen. and emotionally. Amen. And if he ain't doing it, you got the wrong man. Amen. Amen. That's what a leader in the house of man of God does. Amen. 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 So all of you thought it's coming by and dropping a few dollars down and saying, cook me a meal, it's the wrong man. Amen. Well, I'll pay you a bill, and he's paying the other woman's bill down the street, too, and the one around the corner's bill, too. And you happy with that? Mm -mm. I wouldn't even be happy with that. <laughs> all right, jealousy. Proverbs 27 and 4, write that down. Jealousy, Proverbs 27 and 4. Romans 13, verses 13 through 14, and we're going to go to James.